Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another um, group um, with this sprite that I can actually, when it touches it, it's going to change and eventually if you touch it enough it'll break uh, to get through there. So, a couple ways to do that. Um, I'm going to create another group. Um, I'm going to call this temporary walls. And I'm going to add a sprite to that group. And then I'm going to create sprite. And this one is going to be at Uh, 180, 180. And then I'm going to make it look like a wall as well. So I'm going to go back to groups and say animation each for these. So now this looks the same. The only difference is, is that when you move, you can actually go through that one um, because it's not the same. It's a different group, so it behaves differently. Now, on this one, I could make it so that my sprite can displace that guy. So it'd be like a secret passage that gets moved. So down here in my collision detection, I could say I think I could do sprite displaces target, and I think I could do hero displaces, and I think I can put temporary wall, temporary walls here. Let's try this. There it goes. So you can move that out of the way. Now, let's say that I only want that to be displaced. So right now I can move this all the way around. Um, but let's say that I only want it to be displaced, you know, where it's just to here, and then it it stops. So how could I do that? Well, um, let's say I put another temporary wall in there too. So I'm going to have a couple temporary walls. Figure out what I wanted to do. I'm going to have it, so instead of displace that, I'm going to, when you run into it, it's going to change the shade of this um, so that it matches this light blue background. So when it gets to this light blue background, then I know that it's, it's out of the way. Um, or I'm just going to make it look like the color background. I might change the background to the white so it makes this easier to program. But when it disappears, it'll destroy it, and then I can walk through it. That's kind of what I'm going to work on doing here. So this is going to be uh, temp walls displace hero. So now he can't walk through it. Uh, but you can't see the difference between the temporary wall and the hero right now. So I need to create an if statement um, if the hero is touching the wall. Um, but I need to know exactly which wall he's touching. So that's kind of a, a unique thing um, because there's right now there's only one temporary wall but let's say that we had you know five of them that we had to get through. So we need to know exactly which one's what um, in terms of temporary wall. So this is what we have to do is we have to create a for loop to iterate through this temporary walls um, list. And the way that we do that is we use this dot length. Um, and what it returns is how many items are in temp walls. So currently, if I did temp walls dot length, it's going to return a value of one because there's one item um, in my temporary wall box. If I added another wall, so if I did this line of code, and 
you know, pasted it and put this at, let's do an X of like 380. It's all the way at the edge over there. So now we have two in that. So now we're gonna iterate through there and we're going to check specifically if our hero is touching Now this is where it comes in where you have to use this kind of notation. We're going to use the temp walls dot get and then we put the value of the temporary wall right in here. So in this case, the first time through it's temporary wall zero. We're going to put a close parenthesis there. The second time through, uh, it's going to put i as one. So we can see if it's touching either the first one or the second one in the list. So I guess it's the zeroth index and the first index in our list. And then what happens if the temporary wall is getting changed? Well, there is a command um, under your sprite tab. So we, what I've done is I've put a rotation block there and I figured out what tent does now that I've kind of played around a little bit with it. So let's just take this out and we'll just do our rotation. So essentially um, inside of our detect collision we go through this for loop and we look at individual blocks to see if the hero is touching individual temporary walls. And If it's true it's going to set the rotation of that block to 45 degrees. So when I run this I can now take my hero sprite and when I'm pushing against the wall that's not a temporary wall it stays it holds but then there it goes. It turns to a 45 degree, and the same thing would be here. This one turns to a 45 degree. Now, I could have them close back up by doing an else statement. So else, so if they're not touching, I can copy this and paste it, and I can make this go to back to zero. So now it'll be like a little secret door. It opens up and closes when you don't touch them. So those are some things you could do. Now, could you change it to visibility? Sure. So you could do, instead of dot rotation, you could do temp wall dot visible, and you can set that value to false. And here you could do dot visible and set that value to true. And now when you go through here, it gets rid of it and then closes the door behind you. So those are the kind of things you can do with groups. It's nice. The other thing I found that's really kind of neat is if you don't set an animation, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that animation off. So once I turn that animation off, it now defaults to the gray square. Well, if you remember, we can actually, if we go into our block mode, we can increase these and we can change the width and the height. So my block is 40 by 40. And I'm going to change this to 40 by 40. This is the second wall that I add. Now if I run it, they're gray. But if you go under group, there's a set color each command that you can go in and set color each and now I'm going to change it to black. And now you've got the same type of thing but now it's you didn't change an animation. So the nice thing or the cool thing about this now is if I want to run into it I can then have a color um, variable that's like wall damage. And I'm going to start the wall damage at zero. And I can then set my color to an RGB value of wall damage, wall damage, wall damage. Actually, yeah, that's fine. And then I could say down here that if I'm touching the temporary wall, I could then change wall damage it's, uh, I'm just going to use the shorthand notation which is just wall damage plus plus. 
So add one, and then I'm going to change the color. So for that, for an individual sprite color, you have to do shape color. So right here, I'm gonna say shape color gets, and now I'm going to do this RGB, this value right here. I think you have to put in quotes. So let's see if that's correct. I think it's, I think that's what it is. So we'll run it and we'll give it a shot here. Okay, so it immediately went to, to white. That was really fast. Let's see what wall damage. Okay, so I don't think this is correct. So let's get rid of the quotes. So it should have gone like grayscale. There it goes. So now it's going grayscale and it's getting wider and wider and wider and wider as it goes. So what you could do is you could say that um, right here that if wall damage is less than 255, you're going to make it so that the temporary walls displace the hero, else we're going to make wall damage equal 255. We don't want to go beyond that 255 value with our colors. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to change um, so that it no longer displaces. So I think that we can do this and now we should be able to move through. So there it is. There's my secret wall. You see that it's increasing by one, and eventually when it gets to 255, I should be able to march through the door here. And there I go. So now I can go through that little spot. So it's kind of a kind of a cool little thing. Now if you want to increase that, you could do a plus equals you know five. So now it shouldn't take nearly as long. There it goes fades it out, now I can go through. This one went right to it because um, as soon as we moved out through this, we should probably do an else statement on this if. So if it's no longer touching it, it gets reset. Um, so after this um, else statement, um, we could say wall damage. It's reset to zero. Okay, so that doesn't doesn't work. Um, so we're going to just take a look. Oh, it's because it can't be touching this one and touching this one. So, yeah, we could we could do a wall damage as an array, so each wall has its own damage. Um, but we won't do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and comment that out. Um, but again, this should go there. And then this one, we'll just, as soon as we hit it, we're done. But again, hopefully I give you some ideas there with uh, groups and how you can create walls. You can make a maze game uh, with your sprite. You can have little hidden secret doorways and so forth in your game. Enjoy.